So in this tutorial, we are going to look at what happens when you transform the independent variable, what happens when you transform t in the continuous time case or n in the discrete time case. So for example, if this is our continuous signal what and suppose this is x of t, we want to know what would let's say x of 2t look like or what would x of half of t look like or we would want to know what x of minus t look like or maybe even x of t um, maybe minus 2 look like and we may also want to combine all of this and see okay what does minus x of minus 2 t plus 3 look like and this is what this tutorial talks about so the first operation we look at is time shifting all right so time shifting is like time travel we are moving backwards in time or we are moving to the future so if we have a function x of t time shifting is basically shifting the independent variable by some units of time so right so this is like x of t minus t naught we are shifting it by t naught units of time and if t naught is positive all right so suppose this was our graph as before is minus 1 and this is 4 is it 4 yes it's 4 all right so if if t naught is positive so suppose we had x of t minus 2 the graph would shift to the right all right and suppose t naught was negative suppose it was minus 2 so t of minus of minus 2 this is equal to x of t plus 2 so this in this case the graph would shift to the left and now why is that so let me draw the graph again and uh, what we do is we look we look into the past so if if we had to look at x of 0 we look two units in the past so if you look at x of 0 two units of two units in the past would be x past would be x of minus 2 so what was the value of the function x of minus 2 it was 0 all right so let's move on to let's say 1 what was the value of the function at two units past of 1 that would be what was the value of the function at minus 1 the fun value of the function was 0. Let's move ahead to 2 and at 2 the value of the function was 2 units in, uh, so 2 units uh, back in time would be the value of the function over here at 0. So let, let, let's take the value over here as 1. So value of the function here was 1. Alright. And we know that the function increased linearly. Alright. And and the next point, okay, let's let's assume this value is 3. Right. The next interesting point, the point of interest, would be um, would be okay. So at three, at at three, we look two units back in time. It would continue to be one. We we continue. So four would also be one. Similarly, at five, it will also be one. All right. However, at six, okay, let's look at six. Six is an interesting point. So if you look at 6, 2 units back in time would be the value of the function at 4. All right. So over here the value of the function was 0. So it goes back to 0. And that's how, it, that's how you shift a function back in time. And back in time basically means moving to the right. Similarly, if you had to find the value at x plus 2. So this is our curve. Okay. We look forwards in time. So if you had to look at the value at 0. At 0, we basically look at the, so this would have been, let's say, 1 and this would have been 2. At 0, we look at 2 units forwards in time. So what was the value at, at 2 units forwards in time? It would be the value of x of 2. And at x of 2, we have 1. Similarly, similarly, uh, x of x of 1, I mean, if, if at time equal to 1, we would actually look at the value at 3. At 3, also, we had 1. At 2, we would look at the value of 4 so at this point we go down to 0 right at minus 1 2 units in the future would be the value at 1 all right and at 0 it would it would be minus 2 right so 1 2 it would continue to be 1 right and finally at minus 3 you would 2 units into the future would be the value at minus 1 and we'd go back down like this so this is x of t plus 2 all right and x of t minus 2 right and we don't really need to do all this uh, all these long steps all you need to do is suppose we have x of t minus 2 you just shift 
the curve by two units to the two units to the right. If we had x of t plus two, all we did is shift the shift the curve two units to the left, right? And this is time shifting. Just to do a discrete time example, suppose we had x of n as such. Suppose this was one, set zero. Suppose this was our curve, and we want to find x of n minus, let's say one, all right, all right. So if we look at zero, x of n minus one would be the value at minus one. So what was the value at minus one? It was this value. So we would have this point over here, all right, and. Continuing forward, we just like I said in the continuous time case, all we have to do is shift it by one unit, one unit to the right. So the next point would be this, then this, and this, and this is time shifting. The second transformation is time scaling, right? And this is something we can easily relate to um, in 6002x in in the lecture sequences and the tutorial videos. We had this option of uh, changing the speed of the video. We could make it at 0.75x or 1.25x, 1.5x, and that is basic. So the speeding up and slowing down of the video is basically time scaling. You're scaling the time, right? So if we have x of t, we can scale it by a number, let's say alpha of t. All right. Similarly, if we had x of n, we would scale it by a number, let's say again alpha of n, right? So this is this is time scaling. So as an example, suppose this was we'll we'll take the same same signal. Okay, minus one, and this is four. What would happen if we had to look at x of two t? Right, this is x of t. So so scaling it by a number that is greater than one is basically speeding up the signal, right? So it's like one point five x. So what would happen if we speed up the signal? If this, if we speed up this, speed up the signal, the signal should go on faster, right? So this point should happen, should happen earlier, right? So this basically, basically, this basically, um, basically results in compression of the signal. So we would basically have minus one by two, and this would be, this would actually compress. To two, right? Okay, this actually looks like four, but this should be two, and that's what that's what scaling scaling by a number greater than greater than one means, right? So this is time scaling. Time scaling, like I said, is speeding up or slowing down the signal. Another way of looking at it is spe speeding up or uh, slowing down a recording. Right? And suppose suppose alpha was less than one; it was between zero and one. Right, we are slowing down the signal, so it would take a long time for this this value to come up. Right, so we would basically stretch the signal. We would we would basically elongate the signal. So if we had to look at x of half t, we would basically get minus two, and here we would get eight. Okay, this looks a little big, but this if this is one, this is also one. I mean, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have increased the height. That's a mistake. All right, so that is basically time scaling. And it works in the same way in, in the discrete time case. But then the discrete time case, we have something interesting. Suppose we had a suppose we had suppose we had the same signal as before. Suppose we had suppose we had this signal, right? Suppose we had this signal. So what would the compressed version of this signal look like? Suppose we had we had to look at x of two n. Okay, so x of zero would remain the same. However, x of one would basically be the value of x uh, would be the value of two. So it would it would basically be this value, right? So we would get this sample, and and at minus one we don't have the, okay. So the value at minus two is zero, and so x of minus one is actually x of two into minus one. So this we have to actually look at x of minus two, right? And the value at minus two is zero. What is interesting in the discrete time case is that samples are lost, okay, and the shape of the signal changes. So if I had to recount, if I had to, you know, um, join the dots, it looks like this. But if if I but the actual signal is something like this, right? It's like this. So 
in the case of time scaling in a discrete time signal the shape of shape of the curve or the envelope of envelope of the points changes right we we lose samples the last transformation is reflection and reflection is pretty simple reflection is basically what it says it's like a mirror image mirror image of the signal so again let's look at our good old signal and this is minus 1 and this is 4 reflection is basically the reflection about this about the y axis so if i take this signal i'd basically have to reflect it like this it's like a mirror image the lateral inverted image when you see your image in a when you see your image in a mirror you are basically laterally inverted left becomes right and right becomes left so it's like this right so this would become 1 and this is minus 4 and that is reflection similarly in the discrete time case if we had this reflection would basically be this is this is reflection okay so these are the three operations as a final example let's see what we come when we what happens when you combine all three operations so what happens when we see x of alpha t plus beta right so let's go back to our signal minus 1 and 4 okay what happens I mean, what does the signal x of let's say 2t well, what did we take initially we took All right, let's just take x of 2t plus 3, right? So what would x of 2t plus 3 look like? So this involves both scaling and time shifting. Right, so, so we know that the signal would be compressed. All right, we know that the signal would be compressed and the signal would be shifted by, by 3 time units to the left. It would go back to the left, right? So if we had to, if we had to shift it to the left, our signal would look like this. This would be 1 and this would be minus 4. Right? So this is basically shifting the this is shifting the curve 3 units to the left. It also looks like a reflection but that's not what we intend to do. This is actually x of t plus 3. This is x of t. Alright? So this is x of t plus 3. Next what we do is we compress this signal. So if we compress the signal by 2 Right, this would basically translate to so if we compress the signal by 2 this would be half and this would be minus 2 and this is how you do both operations together now let's introduce reflection into that combination so again we have a signal like this This is 4, this is minus 1, and this is x of t. And we found x of 2t plus 3. Oh, this should have been a 2. Okay, 2t plus 3, and it looked like this. It looked like this by 2, and this is 2. Alright, this is what x of 2t plus 3 looked like. What would x of minus 2t plus 3 look like? Now, as a general rule, if you if you paid attention carefully, what I did first is I first shifted the signal and then I compressed it or expanded it, right? So we perform, we do the time shifting operation first, and then we do the scaling operation. So we're going to just follow that. Uh, reflection is similar to a scaling operation. We're basically multiplying the independent variable, right? So we're going to do that again. What we first do is we shift it. We shift it um, three units to the left. This is minus four, and then we compress it, but we also invert it, right? We need to we need to find the reflection. So compression would give us this, all right? Reflection of this would give us reflection of that graph would give us this two and a half. And this is what you do, what you get when you combine reflection, time shifting, as well as scaling. And this is very important. In chapter two of the book, there's a concept con called, called convolution, and convolution involves uh, 
reflection and shifting a lot right so it's very important to understand what a signal would look like uh, when you perform these time shifting scaling and reflection operations so, so far we discussed uh, transformations in the independent variable um, what about the dependent variable can we can we do some transformations there and as a matter of fact we can so suppose we had two signals x of t and y of t we can add them so this is one transformation addition of two signals a slightly more interesting transformation is multiplying two signals and this has got a special name it's called modulation and this will come up in communication theory when if you have, if you study communication theory and this is how older radios work there's something called as amplitude modulation and and um, i'll go a little more i'll divert a little bit from the topic just to give you a sense of it suppose a message signal looked like this all right now wh what happens is um, due to s some reasons you cannot transmit this over an antenna if you had to you need a really 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 long antenna okay so but you can transfer transfer a high frequency signal on an antenna you can't transfer a low frequency signal and by low frequency i mean our voice signal so that is uh, 20 to 20000 hertz right but you can transfer a high signal on a shorter antenna maybe a high frequency signal at let's say maybe a gigahertz so what we do is we use a high frequency signal like this so imagine this is actually 1 gigahertz it's not but imagine this is 1 gigahertz what we do is we we combine these two signals we multiply these two signals and we get this okay um suppose this is our signal so we get this way and this draw it like this okay and our carrier right our high frequency signal would look like this okay so this was basically you these uh, these fluctuations are basically from the carrier signal but if you look at the amplitude okay the amplitude envelope the env envelope of this high frequency signal resembles this right so this amplitude this amplitude is resembling this so we basically somehow uh, we basically copied this message to this carrier signal and this is basically called amplitude modulation and older radios used to basically work on this right so that is one uh, one transformation a more common transformation would be just scaling the signal so we have a of x of t if a is um greater than 1 we would call this amplification if we have sound the sound would go get louder amplification right so that is amplification and the other operation the reverse operation if a is between 0 and 1 all right that's called attenuation so an example of attenuation is you're standing 100 meters away from a friend and you hear him shouting but um, the further you go away the dimmer his voice becomes and that is attenuation right and these are transformations on the dependent variable